Welcome and well met to Words of Asim, the monthly Final Fantasy XIV fan podcast. We are a group of warriors of light from Lamia World on Primal Data Center here to shut the hour away. I'm Yozora Polyanis, veteran black mage, and with me I have our ever fierce warrior, Kalira Talion. Hello. And the high soaring dragoons, Asaria Limoli. Hello. And Midori Toka. Hello. So, we took a month off because, well, I've been busy moving, uh, so I didn't really have any time to record last month, but we're back now with both a patch worth of content to talk about, as well as a new live letter to discuss. How have you all, how, 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 how have all of you been? Uh, I've been doing good, haven't played as much as I intended to, but I at least started all the, all the content. Yeah, I uh, haven't been playing too much. I did get through all the content, uh, though most of, it, most of it was this week, aside from the tribe. I've done... Well, I haven't finished all the new content, because I just started the custom deliveries. I have done the Beast Tribe and the uh, Mander and the uh, Hildebrand stuff. Not, not Beast Tribes anymore, just Tribes. Just, just Tribes. So let's start with talking about the patch content, I suppose. We have all started our custom deliveries uh, with the millions, but there's not really that much to say there. Yeah, it's... You know, if you had anything. Yeah, it's, it's basically custom delivery the same quest. as... It's decent. Yeah, it's the same as... Basically the same stuff as all the other custom deliveries. You get a really nice jacket from it. Yeah, that's what I heard. And then you get to dress her up. Which is... Yeah, well, of course, of course. <laughs> um... And then uh, there's the uh, Arcasador, like yeah, the um, yeah the, the elephants. Um, I started it. It's pretty good. Uh, interesting setup. I was not expecting hippo racing, hippo drag racing. I was not enthused about this one. Um, I just I liked when Ogle was in, was doing stuff. There's one bit in particular that I found amusing. The rest I just was not really. I didn't find the characters very interesting. Or in the, situ- the situation was theoretically fine. But I just, I, it never got me really invested in it. So I was kind of, eh, on the whole thing. For me, it was kind of the same. It's like, it's not the worst of the tribe quests, but I don't think I'd ra- rank it in one of my favorites. It was just there. Although I did like the final uh, quest. I thought that was actually fairly fairly nice and neat. That one was fine. Yeah, that one, the little race at the end was fine. And then... um. Tataru, what do we think about Tataru's quest so far? Yuzora, have you had a chance to start that one yet? I started it. Okay. Uh, I haven't. I haven't completed it. It's, it's very short. Yeah, it yeah. Get it very long. Figured. It's definitely a prologue. Um, the next one's going to require uh, having Shadow of uh, uh, Maha done. Oh, okay. That explains why I saw uh, someone on Twitter going yeah. suddenly deciding they need to do it. So, um, which should be which I'm guessing means it's going to involve the Sky Pirates. That's probably why. Probably, yeah. Probably, yeah. probably not going to yeah, have anything to sense. do with the actual Mahi stuff, but just the Sky Pirates. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, in fact, there's a screenshot of the Sky Pirates, so yeah, definitely. Probably no Void stuff in that one. Probably. probably. Oh, we might get to see Kachi <laughs> again, at least. I don't yeah, know, we'll, we'll, the, we'll, uh, probably the, see, we'll probably see um, KC again. I don't know. The, the, the thing we're working on might end, might end up tying into the Void somehow. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, you never know. Um, and then there's the Omega Quest, which was uh, really good. Yes, I re- I, re- I did oh, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did that yesterday, and I really liked it. Yeah, that tied up a lot of stuff from back in Stormblood. Uh, still tying up Stormblood stuff. <sighs> um, and I really liked the whole thing with the um, with Omega being in the little Omega toy and yeah. being. <laughs> It was just really funny. How, how, just the, the whole way they did it was was very funny, but also very touching. I I, uh, I saw that comment. I'm like, it probably doesn't matter. I'm just gonna go around anywhere. I'm gonna be nice. I went. I went. I took the long way around. <laughs> no, I just went up the stairs. <laughs> I was like, no, I'm not walking all the way around. Uh, Rad's at hand for that. Um, I was kind of think- I was kind of curious if anything else would come up if you took that route, but now yeah. it doesn't. There was oh there was that little a little comment in the second part though with the Hamsa that was pretty funny. Yeah, that was good. So I think that's all the major things that were in six point one five. Well, yeah. uh, there is a big one we didn't talk about yet. Oh yeah, what was that? Hildy. Oh yeah, Hildebrand. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that was a it was a, I mean I, it was a very good start to to a Hildebrand quest. Probably the strongest start since the originals. 
Yes, it, it, yes, I, I, it was easily the strongest start for, uh, for me. And as someone on Twitter pointed out, um, this one you didn't have to wait for a fate to do. So yeah. arguably <laughs> it is the strongest just because of that. <laughs> yeah. Um, one reason it works so well, though, is that because, like, at this point, like, we knew, we knew like, I was pretty certain I knew what was going to be happening. And you have sort of have that anticipation. And it managed to deliver on that anyway. Like, the whole bit with um, him showing up with the Light Warden thing was oh an my, incredible was payoff hilarious. to, like, <laughs> w- the possibilities of things that could have happened on the first for this kind of story. That was an amazing thing for them to do. Yes. Uh, that that scene in particular is one where you, really ben- you can see the... Uh, benefits from the time they've had since since ARR, where they've kind of developed their craft with these scenes. Um, in general, the whole quest was, I think, was really good at just steadily uh, giving you just very funny lines, especially with the dialogue options. Um, and it was uh, so you had like kind of two, you had two major scenes, but between that, there was still a, it was still a, it's regular, at a, kind of at a regular beat, just giving you this stuff. Yeah. Uh, oh, and there's also the uh, the little flashback. Well, I guess that was part of the the what we saw with Hildy, but the flashback with Giat. Yes, that was very funny. Um, I I wonder if you have not done the healer roll quest. Uh, does Giat still have? I assume that, that she still has her helmet on in that one. That was my guess. My guess was the same, basically the same thing that happens, but she would, you would not see see her face, presumably. Yeah. Honestly, I mean, I don't know why I was surprised that they actually did the alien abduction thing. Because why wouldn't they? It got them to where they want the rest of the quest to be the moon. Yeah, apparently they wanted to be on the moon, or at least for a little while. Um, I feel like, I have a feeling we'll be somehow managing to get everywhere, but um, that that is a way to get him to the moon. I actually thought, um, I thought at first that when he was on the rocket, on the missile, he was just going to go all the way to the moon. That's what I thought at oh. first. Because <laughs> I mean, why not? He got knocked up the Dalla moon once. He can ride a missile to the regular moon. Yeah, when, I saw, when I saw that, I was, I was just thinking of it. Of it I just was thinking of it as a callback to previous similar uh, instances. I didn't even consider about uh, how it would get us to other locations. I was kind of expecting them to maybe do the silent movie moon gag where the rocket goes into the moon and then you, then he's there. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, seeing that one boss from the Tower of Babel was also. Extremely random, but also very funny, and also explains why yes. they put more effort than expected into that that guy who was only showed up for like five minutes in the story. Yeah, it was also a refer- a big reference to, to FF4, so that, yeah. that I didn't consider that before, but uh, yeah, it, do- it does make a little more more sense now. Given that you know large parts of the moon is FF4, you expect the remainder of the Hildebrand quest probably to go into the parts that the game hasn't gone into FF4 yet. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they do more FF4 stuff on the moon with them. Hildebrand, it's a good chance to do it. But yeah, that, that would make a lot of sense. Yeah. Maybe we can get a giant dub up real out of it. Yeah, maybe. The giant mecha, that would be really cool. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, I'm betting there's going to be at least one trial with this series, since they seem to be going yeah. all out with them. So, um, also, um, this ties in. This is actually ties into something we'll talk about in a little bit. But um, I like that they called it the interspectoral rift because Hildebrand can't uh, remember interdimensional rift, and Gilgamesh is an <laughs> idiot. But, I did not even catch that. <laughs> um, Gilgamesh hung around in there saying that he needed to go take care of something. And um, I wonder if we're going to see Gilgamesh show up when we deal with what's going on with the Void stuff. That would be really interesting. Because there's no reason they can't put Gilgamesh into like the main story or whatever they're doing there. Um... And they very clearly, I mean, he will probably show up again later, but they clearly signal that he's doing something else. And we know, uh, going ahead and jumping ahead, that we are going to the Voidish area. We saw the 
uh, Four Fiends. Oh, yeah. Because the new okay. uh, dungeon is the... Oh, it no. is the Fell Court of Troia. That, yes. And mm. it's definitely the place that the that the four fiend, the fiends were in, along with uh, Gabranth? Gabranth? No, Gabranth oh, is I, 12. No, uh, yeah, Golbas. Uh, Golbas, yeah, him. I knew it started with a G, but I always forget which one is which. Uh, yeah, Golbez. Uh So... I'm guessing we're gonna de- at least start dealing with that. Yeah, and I'm really looking forward to that. I'm glad that they're go- seem to be going all out on like the void stuff. Like, yeah, they hinted at it in the um, in the six point one story with you know where we got you know this rift and but like it's it felt more like set up for something that would be solved much much later. But now it seems they're actually going for it. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So right. I'm just like it's. And then we'll be getting the trial, and we have no idea what it's going to be. Like, not a clue. Well, if we're fight, if we're going to the fiends' dungeon, the trials could probably, maybe, be the four fiends. That would equal out. Uh, they may do one as like yeah. uh, instant boss, but they could have the other three as you know the uh, trial bosses. Mm-hmm. Uh, like they did for um, the, the four, four, lords. four lords. Um. Yeah, I mean, we'll have to see, but like that, if you look at the screenshot, it's definitely that place. Yeah, and definitely. also there's a screenshot of the main quest of um, Xenos's Reaper avatar dude, and there's also and this is I don't know if you noticed this, but there's a one of the screenshots they showed has um, Warrior of Light, Estenian, Ishtola, um, um, Vritra. Yeah, uh, Sid, and in the background. Is a little tiny Atomos. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're like we're definitely going to the void, and it looks like we're dealing with Xenos's Void Avatar, Reaper Avatar. So that'll be neat. I'm hoping if we actually do get a bit of a home base in the void, that they use the Atomos as like the uh, warp crystals. Mm-hmm. Oh, that would yeah. be so nice. Um, yeah, they did. They actually they, they did that in um in the Grand Blue Fantasy Final Fantasy XI crossover. We we <laughs> we got warped over to the place the the crossover took place by an Atomos. Yeah, eleven did a lot of things without the most actually. Way more than fourteen has done. We're, they're they're only like occasional bosses. Yeah. We I yeah we only have and we never really been a real boss. Just um a couple mob fights in them. Um, yeah, twenty-four minutes. Crystal, t- Crystal Tower. Yeah, Crystal yeah. Tower, and also showed up in um, Ozma. Yeah. Well, okay. also there the thing you least want to see when doing the uh, treasure map instances. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Um. What else? Let's see. Uh. So new tribe quest is as somewhat expected. The Omicrons. Yes, it's gonna be the disciple of the land stuff. Yep. Okay. So yeah, I'm really excited. For, get a fishes for the omicrons. Yep, I am uh, very excited for that one. I fig- finally start leveling. I figured when we went there, it's like that looks like at some point we're gonna be rebuilding this restaurant. Yes, they, yeah. that was yeah one of the most clearly signposted things possible. Yeah, but that's also like, why I thought we would get the disciple of the hand there. Um, yeah, I, wa- I wasn't sure what it'd be for, but it was clear it would be for something, yeah. it was just a question of what. I mean, I, I, um, it's, I, honestly, like, they've been able to wrap you the the quests around whatever they want. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, it could have been any of them or even a completely different different yeah. quest line, so. And so that just leaves uh, crafting and, um... The Lopperitz. Probably the Lopperitz, uh, unless they get a lot of content in other quest lines. Yeah. So they might end up doing something else for them. Um, who knows? Because uh, they pulled the uh, the Shadowbringers crafting tribe out of literally nowhere. Like They weren't even in the story before that. Or sorry, that was the Gathering tribe. The Gathering tribe. Yeah, yeah. because the, the crafting tribe. would be worse. Yeah. And the Gathering was the um, first Kukern. Yeah. Forget what they're called. The Gathering they probably just did because uh they just found the great serpent got p- 
popular out of nowhere. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I, I assume they they had they knew what tribe they were doing beforehand. So yeah, hard to say if they had predict. I mean, it's, it's a big question: is did they predict that that in particular would like explode as a meme as much as it did? Um, but they certainly uh, capitalized on it. Yeah. yeah. All right. Let's see. Anything else? Um, well, we talked about uh, Hildebrand earlier, and uh, the weapons um, quests this time around will be based in the Hildebrand stuff. Yes, that, which has that... been uh, controversial. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think people are just going to have to accept at some point that the game will more and more expect you to play side content. Yeah, oh, yeah, man, how, how, how dare this game expect me to play this game? I know, that's, right? That's, but that's, but that's, all that's how awful. horrible of them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, the game's forcing me to play content, but also there's no content. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, this is interesting because, I mean, I'll, I'll admit I never actually finished a um, Eureka or Bajja weapon because, well, I didn't don't dislike Eureka and Bajja specifically. I just could, didn't feel like keeping up with it like I did for the relics or the anima weapons. Yeah. So if this I... is more like those. I might actually finish these. I finished yeah. Eureka, but not, not the other one. I haven't even finished the Eureka content. The the uh, I finished the Baja story. I have not finished the weapon. What I found is that, for me, it's interesting. I like the way they do that content for finishing the story. It's okay doing it for a little while. The kind of grind you do for, ru- for ru- for, relic weapons, doesn't work as well for that for me. The thing for me with the older ones is that they were great especially when you're going and doing more after the expansion it's great for just mindless grinding while you listen to other stuff which you can't i can't do that with the way baj and eureka work when you have to group up with other people and spend a good chunk of time grinding fates over and over it's like eh, yeah i don't care about these weapons enough to do that yeah like I still have a few AR relics and animal weapons to finish, but I could just I could go and finish them easily enough if I wanted to, um, and it wouldn't like require a lot of mental effort on my part. I would just have yeah. to go and do it. Um, yeah, I finished I will at some all point. My, I finished all my AR weapons. I still have a bunch of animal weapons to do other than my dragoon weapon, but a lot of that is just waiting on dumping poetics into the mats. Yeah. Um. So. Yeah, I've got tons of mats because whenever I would cap out on poetics, I'd just go and buy. A, bunch of whichever whatever the mat i felt like so i've got a whole stockpile of them i probably got like at least two or three weapons animal weapons worth of mats stockpiled yeah that's basically what i do what i do now i have a decent amount i just haven't figured out for, for arr it was easy to know i need x amount of each item for this one because of one step in particular it's less clear plus the number is very high so yeah. um i'm just like i'm dumping into this i'll figure out the exact amount i need later and i ha- and I got past the early step, the early step for all of them, the, the initial dungeon grind for every weapon. I haven't gone past that for anything other than the, the green weapon that I finished. So oh, okay. um, I'll, I'll worry about it at some point. But yeah, so if this is more like those, I'm probably more likely to finish it. Yeah, and I think it is because they specifically said a quest-centered progression. Yeah, it's yeah. Because the problem is because I've tried a couple times to go back because I look at some of the glamour for the uh, Eureka stuff and I wouldn't mind getting it. It's just when you try to solo it, it's it's still difficult. You still need a group and it's hard to go back and do that when yeah. it's no it's longer a little easier. content. Yeah. It's a little easier now because of the echo and stuff in Eureka, but it's it's just a huge grind. Um, and if you don't like, like it, it's not going to work for you. Yeah. If they do something um, that make it actually soloable, then I might go back and do them at yeah. some point. But uh, they might. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised if they did some updates in six point two on that front. Yeah, I know there's a community for it currently for Eureka. At some point, it's gonna probably gonna die down enough. They just go, okay, we're gonna give you, we're gonna like quadruple the echo, so you can just do whatever. Yeah. So. Um. Let's see. What else? So Manderville weapons. Um. I guess the big question is, are they going to... I, are, I, wonder, I wonder what they're going to look like. Like, Yeah, I mean, the, the fact that they specifically, like... We know Goldbert's involved, and that they're named after manual weapons, so I'm guessing they won't be, like, specifically Hildebrand-themed so much as, like, trying to evoke, you know, the weapons that Goldbert would be making. Yeah, um... 
Yeah, there's just there's so many possibilities that some people said, oh, well, there's they're going to be like gag weapons, but yeah, I don't know, maybe they will, maybe they won't. I mean, that'd be kind of funny. I wouldn't mind that. I, I mean, it would be nice to have like have like the the, the the best like the best weapons you can get out of the expansion pack just look like completely silly things. We don't have that yeah. many gag weapons. Yeah, the final... you, it's, I, I'm honestly surprised at how few we have. Yeah, we have like two sets in gold saucer, and then like what the mo- the, mo- the Moogle weapons, I guess. Yeah, the Moogle weapons and the gold saucer weapons are about it. Plus a couple like random other things are kind of funny, like the okay, yeah, some of the dwarf ones are funny. Yeah. The final, the final weapon, the final version should just be Hilda, should be just like a, a Hildebrand in different poses to match the weapon shape. <laughs> See, that would be very funny. That would be hilarious. I, Monk weapon should just be like two buff arms of Hildebrand. Yeah. <laughs> I, I get, uh, the, I get the feeling here though they'll probably have it be a serious weapon just. Yeah. Because, they probably but I, I'm inclined I, to think that. But. I get the feeling as part of the quest, the first weapon you get will be a comedy weapon, and they will have skins, level one weapons you can purchase with either leftover stuff or at the start to go with a gag weapon. Yeah, that, that would actually be a really funny way to do it. That would that be pretty cool. Start with we should, a, what, yeah, we like should a be gag. able to get um, Hildebrand's mom's frying pan, I think. Run roller pen. I mean, it might be neat if they did like have some of them as like you know crafting style weapons as like actual combat weapons. That would be kind of neat. Yeah. Um. All right. So what else is coming up? Uh, pandemonium. Second tier pandemonium abyssos. Uh, they gave us a screenshot of some stairs and s- fog. With yeah, some and like some like spider webs, which is yeah, like, spider that's webs or vines or something. So that doesn't tell us much. Um, they're going to push back the release of Savage one week. People have been asking for that. Uh, oh, good, they said yeah. they will investigate how that goes and to see if they continue. But people have been asking that um, normal mode release and then a week later uh, Savage release like they do with the um, first tier. Line. Yeah. Um, so... There's benefits and drawbacks to that. Um, I personally don't doesn't affect me much, but I, yeah, I think I it's really a good can. idea. I think it's yeah, a good idea, but people are going to complain either way. So, whatever they end up going with is fine. Yeah, it doesn't affect me, but I always thought it, it seemed absolutely awful for anyone that care, actually cared about yeah. the story. So, I guess the real question is: Do they release the crafted gear right at six point two, or do they wait a week and release it with the? raid with a savage raid because if they release it at right at 6.2 then that means that everybody can have full crafted easily who was, cares about savage going in um, which is a lot more difficult normally when you're trying to like you know rush in so yeah it's one of those things where it's like I mean if it, it, it doesn't matter to me or most of us much but if you're Going for worlds first. That's a that's or even just trying to clear within the first week. That's a big advantage to be able to take the time to actually craft full crafted gear and not have to rush to try to get it at enormous prices or craft it yourself right away. This a thought. Yeah, it's um, it's good to be interesting to see how the general response to it is. Do we have any like? Do we have any speculation on what what the raid itself will offer? I don't like, think there's any real predictions we can make because like there's no way we could have predicted what was in the first tier. And yeah, I mean they could do literally anything. Um, I would expect one boss at least to be a, at least reminiscent of some famous Final Fantasy f- monster like um, the Phoenix was, but who knows? Yeah, I'm thinking because, like, stuff like the Hippocampus was, like, mentioned in the Elpis books that you find in one of the side quests. Yeah, um, I didn't catch any other unaccounted for monsters. Yeah. Um, I was I was thinking, like, the, the thing, like, we, we, we just had one, like, big fiery boss, but, like, there's always um, um, Ifrita. Yeah. From, um, that, that is mentioned as being part of, like, um, La Habrea's creations. But, That's possible. 
<sighs> yeah, I don't know. But what Castlevania references will we get? <laughs> well, maybe the reference. Some, but maybe maybe we'll we'll get another Konami franchise this time. Yeah, like, I don't know. Maybe Silent, Silent Hill. Hill. <laughs> yeah, I could see that. It, the, the screenshot does look kind of spooky. Yeah. Um. So yeah, there's no real way to guess on that. Uh, new Unreal Sephiroth. Not going to do that. I hate I hate fighting Sephiroth. <laughs> They're go- they were going to adjust Dragoon and Astrologian. They've decided to postpone it, and then they're going to explain what they're going to do. Interesting. I have no opinions on either of those jobs. I don't care. I, <laughs> I know like you do care about Dra- Dragoon, but I don't. I don't care. I don't I'm have any thoughts. Curious what they'll do. I'm I'm, I'm happy with Dragoon as it is. I, um, I, I'm sure at some point they're going to have to do something to figure out some, some sort of rework for it. I think most jo- any job. For- eventually is going to have to deal with a, a situation where they have to kind of, not necessarily summoner level, but they're going to have to make some major adjustments to, um, so it wouldn't surprise you if they're doing something to prep for that kind of shift they have to do, but in terms of what they might do, I don't know, until and then until they say something, I guess, I don't know uh, what to okay. think about it, but, you know, not don't have a problem with it, just need to wait and see what, what happens. Any thoughts, Meadery? Midori? Uh, did we lose? Seems like we did. Alright, well, we'll continue. Well, okay, moving on then. Um, okay, what else? Uh, we have, they are adjusting critical and direct hit. Oh, uh, cause right now a big complaint is that buffs to critical hit rate and buffs to direct hit rate from skills such as um, Battle Litany from Dragoon and um, Dancer's Dancer's Buff which is I forget what Dancer's Buff is called Um, but the buff Dancer gives that buffs direct hit um, stuff like that don't affect jobs that have a guaranteed critical direct hit skills like Warrior oh so, Dragoon. like, if you have, like, when a Dragoon uses Battle Litany, and it increases critical hit rate by, like, 30% or something, right? Something Which, like that's that, great. Yeah. Um, except that uh, in Warrior has, you know, inner release and um, and stuff, which causes it all, all like, causes Felt Leave to critically direct hit. That means that you didn't get any benefit from that buff. You get benefit from your critical hit stat because that increases both the rate and the damage but you don't get any benefit from direct hit stat because that only affects rate so warriors don't want direct hit so they're looking into changing at least some of that um, they said they will sh- talk about it later so yeah it's a min maxing dps thing it's a min maxing dps thing and crit's always had a general issue where it's just it is the dom- become is the dominant stat basically. Yes, yes. So it's probably it's, it's something that's kind of in general probably overdue for some sort of adjustment, but yeah, like the problem with crit is that it's both crit critical rate and damage critical rolled hit. into one stat, and a lot of games separate that into two stats. Yeah. Um, which they probably won't do at this point because that would be a huge change, but they need to do something. Um, yep. Uh, PvP, they're gonna, uh, just the, se- the seasons move on, um, they're going to bring back Rival Wings, and they're gonna fix up, um, some stuff in Frontlines, because Frontlines is kind of busted at the moment. Oh, yeah, the, yeah. The jobs right. are, were designed for Crystal and Conflict, and, like, so you just get a whole, a whole teams of summoners just nuking each other, and it's just <laughs> ridiculous. Yeah, I was playing some Frontlines, like, two days ago, and just... It was a com- it was a complete mess, even more so than usual. Yeah, I mean, Frontlines is always a mess, but yes, yeah, it, it, yeah, it, it but... is. It's it's not it is it's not working. Like they're not changing it because it's just Frontline. They're not like they're not, they didn't turn it off like they did with Rival Wings because it's just Frontlines and Frontlines isn't really supposed to be balanced. But <laughs> um, uh, it, it's a it's not great. Um, yeah. So hopefully, whatever they did with Rival Wings, they will do with Frontlines. They just need to probably. Um, change some like when you're in front lines affect how some skills work um 
they should also cut some of the requirements because Frontlines just takes too long. Yeah, 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 they, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, the the that's one why I don't do front lines. the one with the uh, cliff in the middle that's the longest one and it just drags oh, yeah um, yeah uh, secure yeah um, the old the one in um, in Cardano yeah I don't like that one at all I need to actually um, try PVP again I haven't touched it since like heaven's word crystal conflict is good mm -hmm. you yeah, can, yeah people, just make sure just to like it yeah just make sure you check your skills at the wolves den before you go in yeah <laughs> yeah. Um, what? Nothing beats uh, uh, going into PvP with a bunch of question marks as your skills? That's what I did two days ago. <laughs> Let's see. Um, they're adding duty support to Snowcloak, Keeper of the Lake, Some All, Airy, and The Vault. Uh, Estinian, Alphano, and uh, Is Isail will be available in some of those. Ooh, Isail, interesting. That's an um, interesting choice, because that means, you know, if they go back and do duty support for older stuff, we could have characters that are dead actually appear as support. Mm -hmm. It's also interesting because well, like... none, none of those are a tank. Um, I'm assuming that you can only have all three of those. Well, that's even assuming that there's, there are all three available for the same dungeons. But I'm guessing otherwise you will have um, your standard uh, Grand Company t uh, ones available as well. So well, that or that or is sale is like an all rounder. Yeah, she could be an all rounder. Um, maybe a Stinian can tank. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's a dragoon. He can floor tank. <laughs> he's. I mean, he is used to just standing in a spot and getting hit while others heal him. Yes. So it'll be interesting to see how that is handled. Um, I seem to remember there's being a mention that they were going to adjust how the airy works with the final boss fight with him. So oh, yeah. maybe he will be able to be part of the party in the airy, and that whole thing still work. We'll see. Uh, well, I mean, steps is, is, isn't that a screenshot? Uh, no, that is... Oh, that might be the airy. I think it's the airy. Yeah. It might be Somal. I think it's Somal. Okay, maybe it is. Alright. Um, Steps of Faith is no longer a trial. It is a solo battle. Oh wow! Which is, Yay! No uh, more steps of faith in trial roulette. It is the it is the former yeah. steps of faith. Um, slightly unfortunate, but also, uh, yeah, it didn't work. It never worked. Yeah, it, yeah. If, if getting it was not near. Was not. They fixed the major issues uh, before Heaven's Word, but it was it was always it was just very boring. Yeah. Um, so. You know, it, it it's boring, but it doesn't have the benefit of being over very quickly like the actual like the the main story ARR trials. So yeah. having it actually they be a, a solo battle means they could actually do the interesting parts of the fight, which made it difficult in a trial because people weren't doing it. You can they actually are have absolutely people do gonna it. Make, they're absolutely going to make you use the dragon killers and stuff. Yeah, it'll actually, probably be a lot of fun. Um, and you will not want to do it twice, but it will probably be a really good fight. Um, Thorn March is being revamped. Um, yeah, because, because it, it is now difficult. the is now the first mandatory eight man trial, eight man content at all, and oh. it is not a good fight. Like just in general, it is a badly constructed fight. Um, yeah, yeah. So they I'm... are revamping it, and uh, who knows what it's going to be like now? But um, they've had a lot of issues with that, like for a. Like, Back when, uh, uh, right after uh, Endwalker launched, they, um, as when they did this, when they, with the yep. whole uh, gear scaling stuff, they it messed things up. up. And um, the uh, and Mog's ultimate that you're supposed to just barely survive halfway through the fight uh, would kill uh, healers, guaranteed. <laughs> um, so. They fixed that, but yeah, it's just it's a it's a messy fight and it's not um, very um, reflective of, of how fights are built now. So I'm imagining it. I'm guessing it'll probably get a pretty extensive overhaul. Um, 
Probably, yeah. And I wonder if they're going to change the extreme version or if they're just going to leave that. Because it's they're totally different fights as it is. Like, they're not even the same fight. Yeah, and, this, and, and the, stream, the extreme version at this point is absolutely... Like like all AR content is absolutely trivial to solo, so and no nobody's yeah. gonna go to Thor March of all things to try to do a, a a real clear. I don't think there's any point to touching it. So I yeah I have a feeling yeah. they won't change extreme, and it also like if you were to do it synced, it actually does function perfectly fine. It's actually better now because there's fewer dots, so that, it's. Um, that's because uh, it was uh, you know designed in <laughs> ARR where Thor the Thorn March, the not extreme was taken. Correct me if I'm wrong. From one point X, correct. Yes, yes. That, that, um, that make that explains a lot. But yeah, Thorn. Like, they could actually probably put Thorn March Extreme as an Unreal, and it would probably be fine. I mean, people would be annoyed because it's an annoying fight, but it it functions perfectly fine. Regular Thorn March just doesn't work. It's just yeah, remember, it, it, it has never worked right. Yeah, um, I remember clearing the uh, Thorn March Extreme in uh, ARR, and it was very obnoxious because everyone had dots, and summoners especially had tons of dots, and it kept killing things. But that's obviously not yes. an issue anymore. So, so I can see, I can see that. It, I, I still think it's not a very interesting fight, but it, it certainly is, as you said, functional. Yeah, it's fine. I don't mind getting that one in Wondrous Tales because it's really easy. Um, variant dungeons. This so. sounds really fun. Okay, so the, they, they'd introduced Criterion Dungeons, and everybody was like, well, what's that? And they, say, they were like, oh, well, we'll tell you later. So, uh, Variant Dungeons is casual mode. Uh, it's for one to four players, no party restrictions, no rule restrictions. How strong the enemies are depends on how many people you have. And it is a branching dungeon with multiple paths that you go along with a, at least one NPC. Hmm. And the first one is the Sildeen Subturn. Subterrain, sorry, which is obviously in Thanalan, um, because Sildi is one of the two countries that eventually became Ulda. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it is the one that the Uldans uh, destroyed. It's the ones who made the um, sunken temple and stuff like that. Yeah. So somewhere in Thanalan, um, who knows who it could involve? Oh, uh, this is a certain someone, which means it's definitely someone that we should know, like someone we would recognize if they told us immediately. Um, so probably not Hildebrand, because Hildebrand's up on the moon, so probably not him, but someone else. So for Second Temple, that was an optional dungeon until the patch quest, but did, they, the, revamp, did the revamp make that optional again, or is it still It's optional something? again, yes. It, it's, okay. been, it's been optional since they revamped um, the patch quest the first time. That's why it doesn't yeah. have duty support. Okay, yeah, I, I remember. The, I remember them taking out the uh, the uh, other thing that you had to do, but I couldn't remember if the if Karn was still part of that. Yeah, no, they took out the guild, the guild has and Karn. Um, yeah, it's still optional, Hesse. so there's yeah, so there's no guild, there's no part uh, duty support on that one. Um, but yeah, it's the same civilization. Yeah, I was yeah, just totally, totally wondering if, if if it might involve someone from that, or if they might suddenly make that required content again. We're not required. Um, but required I'm hoping this. it might. I'm hoping that since it's um, since it's the Seldine, that it, there might be like puzzles a la Karn. Yeah. Um, so, I, the thing about Karn is they keep using it in stuff. So, most people will have it unlocked if you've done any amount of extra content because they they keep they they've used it several times because they want you to do it. Yeah. So they've they've it's it's mandatory for some side content like the animal weapons and a few other things. Yeah. So right, right. Most yeah. people have done. Most people have done it. So it might require Karn to be done, but that's a very minor. That's a oh yeah, in, in yeah, it's not not, not a uh, big requirement. I just, but yeah. So um, but yeah, uh, you guys brought up an interesting point. The puzzles from Karn would be interesting to see if they kind of obviously we don't obviously we don't want to see the exact same version they did there, but see if they be interesting to see if they kind of take. I expect it will from some of that and iterate on because it says you can experience a different story depending on your chosen path. So I'm betting we can. In this, in the variant dungeon version, you know, solve puzzles, and depending on what you do, you different paths open up, and yeah. then you can try it different ways on different runthroughs. Yeah. So, um, so like the, the original Quarn had the floating head things, which are really obnoxious to, to actually deal with. Um, but I yeah. wonder if they'll, they can maybe they'll kind of take that idea and maybe have the floating head things, but maybe make it work function a little better. Yeah, and then the term criterion dungeon is still here and it's the high difficulty four person content uh it requires a tank a healer and two dps 
and it comes in two versions, regular and savage. Um, the regular version can be done through um, the duty finder. It does not have the varying paths or the NPC like the variant dungeons does. All right, and then the savage version requires a pre-made four-person party, and there is no resurrection. Oh wow! Um, there's actually no normal resurrection in the regular criterion either. There will be some sort of uh, limited revival action, probably something like what was done in Delubrum Regani, and um, or possibly they'll just let you use Phoenix Downs. That or makes sense. Be some sort that... of duty action that is like maybe a Phoenix Down duty action. That makes sense. But then sense, in the they... Savage version, there will be no resurrection. Uh, so if you die, you are dead until uh, that basically is a wipe. If somebody dies, that's a wipe, as far as I can tell. Yeah, enemies right. will also be getting stronger if you don't defeat them within a time limit. Yeah, so hmm. there will be like mob uh, groups with enrages. Yeah. So. That makes sense because they, I remember for a long time they, they, I think they had said at some point that the big issue was the pressure it puts on healers. Is that those yeah. those decisions kind of so address I'm that guessing issue. that if you die in like one of the mob fights, but your party still manages to to beat it, you will be able to then return and come back. But you probably can't do it like when somebody has aggro. That's what that's my guess. Is they're not going to make the party wipe entirely in order if somebody dies, but. They have to finish whatever the current engagement is before you yeah. can revive. That, I'm, I'm, that would be my guess for Savage. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing if this takes off because I would love to see like high end content that has the same level of appreciation as the Savage and the EX stuff. Yeah, but for, for dungeons. But you know what? People have been saying they want it, so yeah. they people better engage with it, or it, yeah. or it won't. Or it won't. And then like, well, then that'll be say they'll be like, oh well, see, we tried and you guys didn't like it. And so there you go, no more. So we'll see. Um, but yeah, they all look fun. I'm guessing probably one per patch from now on. Maybe not even, maybe not quite that that often. Maybe a total said, of like. They said they were giving us three of them, right? I think the I think they said the plan was for three over the course of Endwalker. Yeah. So my guess would be one here, one in either point three or point four, and one in point five. That's yeah. my guess. Um, and then they'll if it's like it's, if it's successful, they might do more in later later expansions, yeah. but we'll see. And then Island Sanctuary, which we still know less about than you'd think we would. I am um, so glad to finally be getting to play Animal Crossing again. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> this island looks to be super big because yeah. they showed us a screenshot with most of it blurred out and only a little corner revealed. And that's a big space right there. Yeah. So it's going to be a pretty decently sized island. Um, whether or not you can do any housing stuff is still up in the air, but you can uh, let your minions wander around. So that's no, cool. they, they said that you would be able to build a base. A yes, but, uh, but the question is whether you can build a base and then use your like housing furnishing. Uh, yeah, okay, fair. Because uh, that, that's what people want. Uh, they want their own instance house where they can decorate the inside and outside with their housing furnishings. And we still don't know if you can do that. I'm guessing... That would be that would be, make sense. That would seem like a good thing to do. I'm guessing at the start it's probably going to be similar, but to the Ishgard restoration quest, just on a larger scale with maybe because it is a large island you have some exploration stuff if you want to do it but but remember this island is your island there's not going to be anybody else there this is a yeah. personal instance or at least like it's probably not a personal instance what it probably is it's one of those phased instances where there's just the one place it's, and everybody's there but you can't see or interact or, or contact anybody else it's an apartment on a larger scale yeah I mean that's what people want but we don't know if that's what it is. Like that's the thing. Like the mm -hmm. overall description of what they they've they've said, like you know, is relatively straightforward. Like I don't know how they're going to handle it, but you know, it, it makes sense. But the the thing people want is to be able to have a like house from the housing districts 
but on this island, and be able to do all the stuff you can do with the house on the island. That's what people want. Which I don't think they're going to get that entirely. But who knows. They should let us use at least the outdoor decorations and stuff, though. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't cared to get enough to get an apartment when I'm, I don't even visit my, the house, our, uh, our FC house, really. But, you know, if they give me something new there, I might actually use some of my furniture. So yeah, it might be nice, I guess. I mean, my thought on it is that you can get an apartment or an FC room if you want to use your indoor furniture. But it is a good point that unless you have permissions, unless you own your own house or have FC permissions to decorate the outside, exterior furniture is useless to you. So they yeah. should give us a place to oh, use yeah. that. So... A um, bunch of updates to adventure portraits. Um, I think the system will make more sense now because it was kind yeah. of backwards before. Um, I'll have to actually, like when it drops, we'll have to go, I'll have to go in and check and see. But I think it makes more sense now. I'm hoping um, they fix that you need to reset the portrait whenever you update a gear set because that's annoying. Yes, that's one of the things they said. Um, so uh, portraits may be updated to reflect current equipment. All right, but you can also basically if you have changed your equipment, you can then change the equipment in the portrait to fix to match what you're currently wearing, that's, and then save that. So I think that's what you're asking for, uh, and without having to completely redo the whole thing. Um, we will be losing our current ones, though. We have to remake all of them from scratch. Yeah. So, but that's fine. They said it was a beta, and so it's yeah. Fine. Um, they'll now be used in Doman Mahjong. They are looking for ways of adding it to things like dungeons, like having it pop up at the entrance of like a four-man dungeon, which could oh, be cool. Because cool. um, I, re I mean, I really like that in Crystal and Conflict, how it pops up everybody's adventure plates as you enter. Yeah. I think that's I think that's really cool. It might be neat to do that in dungeons. Um, uh, come to think of it, I remember that for a while people were doing like kind of vaguely lewd things. There's pictures that ever say or do anything about that. They, they, or, they were they were do, they were more than just vaguely lewd. <laughs> right. Well, I couldn't, remember, um, I couldn't remember what you could do with that without mod, without modding them. But uh, but yeah. So I mean, basically, um, I, if it's bad enough, I guess you could just report them, and they'll tell okay. them to change it. They, 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 didn't, they never made any policy changes or anything about that regard. They do not seem to have. They, I guess they figure if you can do it with the bit with the stuff in the game, because because you will, as like any mods you have won't show up in your adventure plate for anybody else. So it's not like it's not like it's taking a picture. It's actually dynamically generating the the, the plate every time. Yeah. So, um, if it's like and it, the, 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 it seems to be basically. If someone reports it, we'll take a look, and if it's too bad, we'll make them change it. Okay. That seems to be the policy. Right. Um, um, although they can always add, uh, I don't know how difficult it would be, but uh, a toggle for peop for just to display the default portrait, uh, regardless of what other people do. I think there is a toggle for that already. I think so. I'm pretty yeah, certain there's an option so. where... You where you can set it and you will only see like other people's like generic face on portrait. Yeah, mode, it's basically the game's version of streamer mode. Yeah. So, um, that's always an option. Um, new elegant tombstones, causality, casuality, or is it causality? Hold on, I, I gotta check. The uh, Reddit Discord. I feel like I've heard both. Casualty. Uh, casualty or causality. Well, yeah, good question. My, the, I, it's 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 casualty here, but yeah, that's what I'm a, checking. This is the this is the official write up, so I don't know. Yeah, let me let me check. It should be um, called casualty because that fits with the uh, the theme. So no, duty support variant dungeons, criterion dungeons, island sanctuary. It's uh, C A S, Portrait. so I believe it's causality. It's causality. Okay, 
because I've got the I've got the original site. It is causality. Yeah, it's uh, uh, C A U S A L I T causality. Um, the uh, uh, casualty was much more fun. <laughs> we might get that one a little <laughs> little while later because like because well. uh, there's there's a no, there's a note in the um at the at the um apparently in, in the live letter um the, uh Yoshida said uh, we're running out of names for these new Allegan tombstones. Yeah. Um. So yeah, no, it is causality, which makes more sense for what they are, like the in the theme they use. Um, yeah, that's why I figured it was, unless they made a typo. All right. Now, Allegan tombstones of casualty are what happens to casuals when they go into <laughs> savage. <laughs> All right. Um. You can now request players to repair your gear. Finally, after. Almost a decade. Yeah, over a decade. And inside duties even. That's and even inside duties. Good. I mean, it, it, it's it's a miracle. Um, that's it's honestly re- amazing that that has not been added until now. Um, so that's nice. Uh, that will help some raid groups and just people who enter a a roulette and then did not repair their gear. So. Uh, they are going to show combo sequences in the actions list. Yes, which will be nice you. if you are starting Finally. a new job and you can, oh, <laughs> you know what good. order your weapons are supposed to go in. So that'll be that'll be helpful. Replacement um, actions will also be shown and like yes. So I, I I started playing on my European alt like this past week and like I haven't touched her since 2016. So I had to like rebuild my hot bar and I can't. I just. I hate forgetting which ones go where and like which shame get changed into something else later on when I level. And I'm so yeah. glad they're finally adding this. Yeah, so that'll be nice. Um, new materials from Ethereal Reduction, um, whatever. Glamour Dresser expanded from 400 to 800. That's yes. great. Finally. And um, if you have not done them and you do want to do them, the uh, Return to Evil East quest, Macon, Bacon, Bread, and wor- and Walk On By are going away. I don't even remember what those are. Those those are the ones where um, you have to make a bunch of bunch of uh, food for the, the the dude on the. Um, the the uh, quest where Masuda was just like yes. taking the piss. Yes, yes, they are getting rid of those. Uh, I do not know why. I'm kind of surprised, actually. Yeah, they were they were um, entirely sure optional. Was... Oh no no, I think you did have to do them to unlock the uh, the uh, new game plus for it. Oh yeah, that's why. Um, the... That's unfortunate. Um, they, I mean they they were they were really annoying quests, but still it's unfortunate. Yeah, I, I remember I had I did the first one and the second one I I kind of didn't get around to, and I was like, why well, don't I have a new game plus? Oh. So I like um, doing I like doing it, but yeah, th- th- there was some pretty funny stuff in those. So, so uh, that covers everything from the patches. But before we finish, there's one more thing I want to talk about. Oh yeah, yeah. So you guys heard about the billboard, right? Oh yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> so in case you are not up on uh, Final Fantasy XIV drama on Twitter, um, a a free company, um, I don't know the name of them, I, I think they're on Crystal, but I don't know exactly, I don't care, um, that is heavily into um, RP stuff and runs an RP venue, uh, decided that it would be a really smart idea, um, and that's that's smart with, with air quotes, okay? SMRT. Yes, yes. Uh, to um, purchase some billboards in Texas and California to advertise their roleplay venue... And put on them the official Final Fantasy XIV logos, and use and sh- have pictures of characters who are clearly using mods. So yeah. that has not gone well on multiple fronts. Uh, they were issued a cease and desist by Square Enix because, of course, they were. But that part I had not and heard yet. And basically, everyone just started making fun of them like just constantly and so it was it, it has been it has been a time uh they have they have not been having a good time <laughs> well deserved because that was a very very 
not smart thing to do. It's yeah. <laughs> it's like okay, if you want to spend money to buy a billboard to advertise your role play server, I wouldn't do it. But I don't have a problem with it. But using in-game assets, modified in-game assets, the logo, you know, you're doing a lot of yeah. It's a lot of stuff Square <laughs> wants you to be quiet about doing, and they don't care. But if you're loud, they care. Yeah, and yes. I heard that uh, apparently, I don't know if this was true, ended up being true or if it just uh, it turned out wrong, but I heard apparently some of the modded assets were things were data mined or something. Yes, um, so um, what was being done was their, was the, um, the they were shown wearing outfits that have not been implemented yet, and I believe they might even be Mog Station outfits that are in the data file, that are in the files of the game, but have, at least have not, or at least were not at the time when the billboards would have been made, implemented. Very intelligent decisions were made. Yes. So, that's that's been an interesting uh, thing to follow. Um, I think that about covers it, unless anybody has anything else. Um, I do want to give a shout out to the uh, very impressive um, Format 14 community cover of um, Closing Close the Distance. Oh, yes, I saw that. I did not get a chance. I was going to watch that, and then I, then I forgot, because I, I saw it popped up when I was uh, on my phone, out. Yeah. And then I forgot to go and uh, look for it when I got home. Um, yeah, uh, it was, um, what's his name? Alex Mukala? M- M- yeah. I can never remember his name. Um, yeah, something like that. Hold on, let me let me pull it up on YouTube. In the distance cover. Cause I, I, I want to get his name right because he's a cool he's a cool dude. Um. Uh. Yeah, Alex Mukala. Uh, I am pretty certain I do not have the accent on that right. Um. He does. A, he's a music producer on uh, YouTube, and he does a lot of stuff with Final Fantasy fourteen. Um. And he talks. He talks about music in general, and he like discusses um, like the production of music, and he produces his own music and stuff. Um, yeah. He's been on a few Final Fantasy fourteen podcasts. Uh, really cool dude. Um, and yeah, he got it's like a thousand people singing from mm-hmm. like all over. Oh, wow. So um, I have not a chance. I'll check that out after this. But yeah, that's something that you should definitely check out. Is um, those are those are always super impressive. Those yeah, are those exactly. Like, I'm always. It ended up getting like um, like Square Enix like actually ended up like sharing the video and everything. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised because so yeah, no, that's cool. So yeah, absolutely check that out. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, there's going to be a TV show it. in Japan, of course, called "Looking for Party Members," oh. which I I'm very interested in finding out what that what is. Kind, what kind of show is it? Like, it's, it's, I don't know. <laughs> like they just said that it's called looking for party members there will be entertainers from some network hosting it um huh, and it'll be like free sort of... it'll be free to watch on mobile phones and pc all right well i guess we'll see um okay that that's sir something yeah. uh, and of course there's the uh, manga, the uh, School of Light, which uh, I'm hoping gets an official English release at some point. It's kind of surprising that it doesn't. You'd think they would be on top of that, but um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I guess I don't know. Well, I mean, it, 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 there's a lot of things like that that Square Enix haven't bothered with yet. Like the Final Fourteen Light novel has not been released in English either. Yeah. Uh, the that Sa- feels like the it's... Saki manga has not been released in English. Yeah. Yeah, the Square Enix manga side is kind of weird, and yeah, it's, like it's releasing some stuff like the um, other side picnic manga. They're releasing that. Um, yeah, but, I, and I, I have the light novel which is nice of, of Final Fantasy One, Two, and Three. They released as well, but like, I don't know, it's strange. Yeah. All right, well, but yeah, I think, I think so. that's what we have to cover for this month. And part two so, should have been. Yeah, by been. next month. We should have part two of the live letter, yeah. Um, but the patch isn't until late August, so that'll Perfect. be covered two months from now. 
So, but we'll 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 plan to do this after the next live letter, or we'll have nothing to talk about. Indeed. <laughs> so, as always, we have been Words of Asim, and you can find us on Twitter. You can find uh, Cleartelian at Cleartelian. You can find Azaria Limili at Azaria Limili. You can find Midoritoka at Satoshi Miwa. You can find me at Fail Ultima. And until next month, stand tall, our friends. Our journey never ends. Alright, see you then. Bye. Have a good one. <laughs>